Welcome to a special episode of the Book Club Review, the podcast about book clubs and the books that get you talking. Imagine being able to read without any interruptions. No kids, no TV, no emails, no shopping, no laundry. Well, it is possible. Reading retreats offer holidays where the only thing you're expected to do is read. But what's the experience really like? Does it live up to the dream? I went along to Matlock in Derbyshire to find out. In the comfortable kitchen of an old stone house, Sarah Noel and Cressida Downing are preparing lunch. Today, their guests will sit down to a winter salad niçoise followed by fruit tart and cheese and biscuits, none of which those on the reading retreat had to prepare for themselves. All they had to do was turn up, sit in a comfy chair and read their books. And that is what Sarah and Cressida wanted to offer when they started reading retreats. Our readers come from a complete cross-section of ages. We've had people come from the States, from France, from Germany. Our youngest readers have been in their 20s and probably our oldest was, I think, 80. They come with different experiences of reading. Some are passionate readers who just want to have more focused time and some are people who have sadly sort of fallen out of love with reading and are looking to reignite their reading passion. We don't prescribe what people should read or how many books they should read. It's just about giving people the space and time to read. Cressida, how did the idea come about to set this up as a business? Well, I'm a professional editor in my day job, so I do a lot of reading for work, but I also do a lot of reading for pleasure. And I was having a bit of a stressful time of it. And my husband suggested I go on a spa And I didn't really want to go on a spa. I said I wanted to go on a reading spa and there wasn't one. So I cobbled together my own attempt at it and stayed at Gladstone's Library, which I love in North Wales. But I thought we could run these. And the only person I could think of that I could do it with is my friend and excellent host and cook, Sarah Noel. Sarah, you were a willing accomplice. Oh, absolutely. I thought it was an excellent idea. And I love cooking and looking after people and combining that with getting people away for a long weekend or a break that's just focused on books I thought was a fabulous idea. My father spent a lot of time in Italy when I was young and he instilled in me this connection between love and food and that you sit people around a table and you feed them and just everything goes from there and discussion and not sort of rushing down food in front of the television. It was very much about food is love. So that's the background that I came from and that's what I continue to try and do with food. And then you get these lovely convivial moments around the dinner table where people are able to share their stories about what they're reading. But people are also free to read at the table if they want to, aren't they? They are. No one has yet. Um, But we also offer the option of taking a tray of food up to your room and continuing to read or to read in the reading room. One of my great pleasures as a child was reading and eating and always being told off for it. Put that book down. You know, so we're trying to get back to that point where really the only thing you need to know is there will be food and that's it around that do as you will and we're in this lovely old atmospheric house here in matlock in derbyshire you have a range of houses that you use don't you what are you looking for in a good reading retreat house we want the bedrooms to be comfortable we need to have a separate closed off reading room which we can keep quiet because we do have a no speaking rule in the reading room so a lot of houses have open plan downstairs and they're no good for us we need a really good kitchen or sarah's not happy and we need to keep sarah happy and we like a nice dining room so that people can talk Then in terms of locations, we vary. So we have a house we like by the sea. We have one by a river we like. Um, This one in Matlock is our most urban, I would say, because we're right in the town. But at the same time, we're down a little terrace and we're opposite a very beautiful park. So there's always something beautiful to look at. I think that's important for us too. And if people aren't sure what to bring with them, you offer a service where you will make some suggestions for them. Yes, we do call that a reading prescription, but it's it's more like a, a suggestion rather than a prescription, I guess, in some ways. So I'll talk to someone for 10, 15 minutes on the phone about what they read, about what they want to read, whether they want to read within the things they know they love or if they want to be stretched out of their comfort zone, if there's anything particular they're looking for. And then I'll come up with a list of about eight to 10 books. I'll send them the list and they can then go and source those. The idea is to give them more books than they would need for the weekend because then they can continue with a list of things that they might want to continue reading. And you mentioned to me you found people often go away and report back that they have managed to carry on fitting in more reading than perhaps they were able to do before they came on the retreat. I think the lovely thing about a reading retreat is it reminds people that they like to read and we are very passionate about taking reading off the ought list and putting on the want to list. So 
people will always say, oh, I ought to read more books or I ought to read that book that everyone's talking about or I ought to read that library book. And we don't want it to be an ought. We want people to remember why they like reading. And once they do remember that, you know, we're all really busy people, but you realise that you want to carve some time out to read. So you will take something else out and you will put reading into that slot. I know we've had women, particularly with families, who have instigated a sort of reading hour at the weekend where everybody reads for an hour, even very small ones. It's a really good modelling as well and really good to tell children not to interrupt your mother when they're reading, although my children still have not learned this lesson. We're working on it, we're working on it. And we have these returning readers and they do seem to be coming back, having read more in the intervening time than they had before they started. Do you have any suggestions for people who perhaps aren't able to come away on a reading retreat but want to do that, want to try and figure out some ways of working in more reading into their lives? There's a few things you can do. One is that we do offer gift vouchers, so get your friends and family to buy it for you. The second option is to block out a day and tell everybody you're away or doing your tax return or something that they think is worthwhile because people tend to think they can interrupt readers. Get in food that you don't have to cook. It won't be as good as Sarah's food, but you can do your best. Get a nice blanket together because it gets chilly if you sit in one place at a time and get some new books because by new I mean from the charity shop, from the library, wherever you get your books from because that pile of books you've been meaning to read has a sort of slight taint to it and won't feel good to get stuck into. That will feel more like the aughts. So make sure there's something you want to start with that you're really excited by or an old favourite or something you know you're comfortable with and make sure you've got good light, make sure your glasses are up to date and curl up and ignore everybody. And you sort of are surrounded by books here at the retreats. You're obviously thinking about books when you're between the reads, and I'm sure you're both very keen readers yourselves. Do you have any suggestions? What sort of things that you've read recently that you've really loved that maybe would be good for a book club? Sarah? The book that I was most taken with recently was The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. An incredibly complex book, but just absolutely mesmerising. And one of the other lovely things about being on the retreat was that we had dinner with an author last night, Sarah Ward, crime writer, who is a local author and her books are set in this area. What are you thinking when you're trying to figure out an author to come along and what's going to work and how that's going to fit into the mix? We encourage authors to come along and talk about their reading rather than come and tell us about the books that they've written or are writing. And that has worked so well, sharing what their inspirations have been, books that have influenced their writing. We've had authors who've come along and talked about a book for each decade of their life. We've also had an author who came along and talked about books that have got her through difficult periods in her life, books that have supported or reassured or been uplifting at difficult times. We want authors to share their love of reading. That's the main thing. And we've had a complete cross-section from crime and romance, literary authors. We try to find someone who's local as well, particularly if they've written about the location where we are holding the retreat. One of our authors taught us all how to pick locks. So you never quite know what you're going to get on a reading retreat. Cressy, what books have come to mind for you? The Western Wind by Samantha Harvey, which I think is a stunning book. And I don't think the cover reflects what it is, interestingly, because I picked it up thinking it was a medieval mystery story. And yeah, I guess you could say that. But it's a really interesting, literary, immersive book that really moved me. And it's set in Somerset, which is actually where one of our retreats was earlier in the year. I'm hoping maybe we can get her to come along to a reading retreat. That would be lovely. Of course, I had the strictest of intentions just to immerse myself in my books, but I couldn't be there without asking my fellow readers what they had in their stacks. And luckily, they were willing to indulge me. Here's Annie Persek and Sheila Anderson. It turns out that Annie is an old hand at reading retreats. It's actually my seventh retreat. I was on the pilot retreat and I've come back as often as possible since then. So what was it about that first one that you loved and has kept you coming back again and again? I think when I describe it to people, they seem to find it a bit ridiculous to pay money to come away to read when I read a lot anyway. But it's just giving yourself permission to do nothing else than read. And also the hospitality of Cressy and Sarah is just so amazing and the food is incredible and everything is laid on and it's just so incredibly relaxing. Unlike me, you probably have quite a good sense of how many books you're going to get through in three days. What's that stack that you've brought with you there? How many have you got? I've brought six. I usually get through four or five, but I like to have a buffer in case there's a dud in there somewhere. This time around, I'm alternating literary and fantasy because they're my two main genres, but I've got quite a range within that, I think. Do you want to just quickly run us through the titles so people know? I'm sure people are dying to know what you've brought. 
Sure. I have A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towles, A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, and I haven't read any of hers, but lots of people have recommended them to me. Sophia Khan is Not Obliged by Aisha Malik, which I've heard a lot about and has been on my list for a long time. Rosewater by Tade Thompson that I actually got at a workshop run by the author, so that's signed, and I'm looking forward to giving that one a try. Belonging by Umi Sinha, and Among Others by Joe Walton. Fantastic. Well, I'm very much looking forward to coming back to you at the end of the retreat and finding out how you got on and uh, and what you thought of those. Sheila, if I can turn to you. So this is your first retreat. Yes, I've just retired and I wanted to do something to mark the occasion. And I thought, what better than just to come away and be looked after and indulged and just be able to read and read and read. And I want to see if I can recapture the ability to kind of read continuously rather than reading, breaking off, coming back, scan reading. So it's a bit of an experiment as well. Here am I immediately distracting you with my my podcast microphone and my interviews. And tell us what you've brought in your stack. I have Julian Barnes, The Only Story. I love Julian Barnes. I think he just writes beautifully. I love the kind of lyrical way he writes. And I like the emotion in his more recent writing. So I'm looking forward to reading that. It's only a small book, but I think I need to take time to read it and really kind of absorb it. I've got a book by Alice Castle called Revenge on the Rye. This is about um, a Miss Marple of South East London. I live in South East London and I live right near Peckham Rye. She's a local author and I just like supporting local authors. I quite like the crime genre. I have Washington Black by Ezzy Edugan. I read... Oh, it's a story about blues singers under the Nazi regime. Again, she writes beautifully and she writes about, particularly about the black experience. And I just find her work kind of really moving and really quite challenging at time as well. And this is about Washington Black as a, um, a slave boy. I've got Val McDermott, Broken Ground. Again, crime genre, DC Charles. I love the way she writes about women. And I love listening to her as well. So I'm looking forward to getting to grips with that. And then I've got A Boy in Winter by Rachel Seifert. Again, you know, she writes kind of really powerfully about Nazi experience, the Jewish experience. And again, that's something I'm kind of really interested in, have been interested in professionally as well as personally. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. So a real kind of mixed bag of stuff. So good. Enjoy it. Really, really. But you're saying about things building. And again, you start with that, do you think, oh? Day two, and on a typically damp English June day when those cosy blankets were needed and the fire was crackling in the reading room hearth, we were all making good progress on our books. That evening, over the usual sumptuous dinner, we were joined by local author Sarah Ward, whose crime novels featuring Detective Connie Childs are set in the Derbyshire Peak District. She had brought a stack of books that were significant to her, and I thought there were a couple of potential book club gems in there. The first one is a Nordic noir. It's called The Silence of the Sea by Ursa Sigurdottir. Ursa is an Icelandic crime writer. She's written a number of standalone books, but her great books feature a series detective called Thora Godmansdottir. And The Silence of the Sea is one of my favourite. And it's a sort of Marie Celeste type mystery where a deserted ship crashes into the Reykjavik docks. And Thora, who's a lawyer, goes along to try and work out what's happened. And then part of the book is set in Spain. So there's that nice sort of contrast between sunny Spain and the sort of cold Icelandic landscape. And the other will be a familiar writer, I think, to many. But I didn't know this book of hers. So Sarah Waters is a really great writer and what's great about her is she can write with authority whenever she sets her books, whether it's in the Victorian period or the Second World War. My favourite of hers is a ghost story called The Little Stranger. It's an example of how ghost stories, which are usually particularly in the short story form, can be expanded out to a novel, in particular when you're talking about other issues, other interests and so on. The Little Stranger is set around a house, which is always a great place to house a ghost story but it also deals with social issues the decline of English families after the first world war and sort of changing times and how people have to come to terms with different time periods and the sort of moving through the modern age it's now the end of day three of the reading retreat and I am here with Annie again Annie how have you got on with your books 
Well, I'm coming to the end of book three for the weekend, which is actually a low completion rate for me based on past experience. But I have very much enjoyed all three, which is great. And they've been very, very different books, which I also like. And I have to remind myself it's not a competition. So I shouldn't really be comparing to how many pages I managed to complete last time. And are you already planning your next one? Yes, well, I still have another few in my bag that I brought with me. So I know which one I'm going to be starting on the train tomorrow morning. And you sort of organised your books, didn't you? You had them in a quite a specific order that you wanted to read. Do you always do that with your reading retreat books? I do. It's kind of part of the ritual of looking forward to a reading retreat. You know, a few weeks beforehand, I'll be setting aside books and figuring out which ones I can get from the library to coincide and working out what order I'm going to put them in. It doesn't always follow through. You know, I will get here and suddenly think, oh, actually, I'd rather read this one. But it is kind of part of the enjoyment for me to kind of put together my list. Anticipation is definitely part of it. And of those three that you've read, is there one that you'd particularly recommend to people? Definitely A Gentleman in Moscow. I had absolutely no idea when I opened it what it was even going to be about. I absolutely loved that. And what about you? How have you found it? I've been a bit dismayed, in fact. I think I was wildly overambitious in what I thought I was going to get through. I really thought I was going to be able to power through a list of 16 books. And now I've realised that even with the best will in the world and some fairly consistent, sustained reading time you know reading is a slow process you can't really rush it the Anita Bruckner that I read Hotel du Lac I mean that's a really slim book but the writing is very detailed and precise and I couldn't skim it and I found sometimes I had to go back because I felt like I hadn't really fully unpicked the nuances of a sentence and so that book even though it's so slim took me quite a long time to read I think one thing I have learned, this being my seventh reading retreat, is that it's all about learning to relax into it and not worry about how many pages you're getting through and how long it is till lunch and how much you can actually get through during that time and just enjoy sinking into a book and really being immersed in it. Sheila, I've lured you away from the dining table to find out how you got on with your books. I've got them really very well, I think. I've probably read three books. I've read two completely and I've read half of two other books because I've found that I quite like having different books on the go at the same time. So it's been really interesting to discover my reading habits and reading patterns. And do you think, will there be anything to sort of take away with you from this experience that might then change your reading life a little bit when you go back home? I think I've rediscovered the joy of sitting and reading without allowing myself to be distracted I found the first day we were here there were moments where my brain wanted me to be somewhere else or do something else the kind of environment that's provided here almost forces you back to reading and today I've absolutely loved it and I've really enjoyed just sitting in different places reading that's been absolutely wonderful it's nice isn't it having options for places that you can go the houses are big enough aren't they that you know you could choose which room you're going to be in yes it is and I think that's one of the really clever things about the way this setup is a you've kind of got the freedom to pretty much do what you want but then you've got little spaces where you can go and sit so you know I've sat in the quiet reading room today because it was a lovely day I went and sat across in the park for a little bit I've sat in my room in a way perhaps that's given the slight distraction that I've needed as well and do you think I might ever bump into you at another one do you think you'll come again oh I think probably yeah I think they might be a bit addictive (laughs) I think it might become an annual fix well that was the end of my time at the reading retreat I did really enjoy it Although, as I mentioned, I was wildly overambitious about what I'd be able to read in the time, and the dream for me would have been to have had one more day. I did manage to read four books, though. Hotel du Lac by Anita Bruckner, which I heartily recommend and think would make for a fantastic book club book. There There by Tommy Orange, which I thought was good but flawed, so probably also quite a good one for book club. It's an of-the-moment tale of the urban Native American community in Oakland, California, and was one of Barack Obama's best books of 2018. I also read Bad Blood by John Carreyrou, which is my book club's next read, a non-fiction page-turner telling the story of billion-dollar Silicon Valley blood testing company Theranos. And finally, Asymmetry by Lisa Halliday, a debut novel told in three compelling sections that gradually reveal themselves to be linked. That's the one that intrigued me the most. I'm still thinking about it. And another one that I think would be great for book club. To hear more about them, look out for our next bookshelf show, where I'll discuss them all with Laura and find out what she's been reading while I've been away. 
You can find out more about Reading Retreats at their website, readingretreat.co.uk. They're also on Facebook and Twitter at Retreat and Read. That's all for this special episode of the Book Club Review on Retreat. If you'd like to see what we're up to between episodes, follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Book Club Review Podcast, on Twitter at Book Club RVW Pod, or email thebookclubreview at gmail.com. And if you're not already, subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts and never miss an episode. Go on, we've got some good stuff coming up. But for now, thanks for listening and happy reading.